We've all been there before. We get to a point where we're sick and tired of feeling sick and tired. We get the idea in our head that we're going to finally take charge and begin getting some exercise in our lives. On top of that, we're determined to begin a new clean eating approach that will allow us to lose the weight quicker and help us get on the right path for our health and fitness. But then that voice in our head blurts out, oh, that's a nice idea that you got there, but how the heck you think you're gonna find any time to do any of this? Now that little voice in our head is our built-in self-defense. It's there to keep us safe from stepping outside of our comfort zone. You see, we are wired inherently to make every effort possible to prevent us from any change occurring in our life so that we can maintain the norm. Now, not to say we all aren't busy because many of us are. However, today I'm going to share with you three effective steps that will allow you to strategically find time to get in your workouts, make time for that nutrition, get adequate sleep and all the other things you need to do for your health and fitness. Let's dive in. Welcome to episode 24 of the Ethan LaRock Show, where I'm here to help you get your fitness back on track at any age and regardless of your current fitness level, so you can spend more quality time with your families, have a brighter outlook on life, and finally find the true joy that life has to offer. I'm your host, Ethan LaRock. We're having another beautiful day today. We are breathing, we have our health, and we have our freedom of choice to make all the decisions we need to make each day. And I'm choosing to share my time with you today. And I feel honored that you're here, allowing me to share my tips and tricks with you so that you can take control and get your fitness back to where you want it to be. I'm excited as always, and thanks for hanging out. For those of you listening on Apple Podcasts, thanks for listening to this show. Your support is always appreciated. If you're watching on YouTube, thanks for coming back for another episode. I'm cheering for you each week as you push forward with your goals. And I look forward to your comments and feedback each week as I love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Being a 52-year-old online fitness coach, author, and working full-time, I know how easy it can be to use the excuse, I don't have time. I also know exactly what the reality is, and I've been able to easily manage the time I have available, allowing me to write a book, create an online course, set up a website, manage a YouTube channel, post to social media, write emails to my community, maintain an amazing relationship with my wife, and yes, work full-time as a project manager in a fast-paced environment. If I can do it, anyone can. So this week, I'm going to be sharing with you three strategic steps that you could begin using today in order to start taking back your valuable time, allowing you to start moving in the right direction, moving more, eating better, losing the unwanted weight, and taking back your health and fitness. Now, if you haven't done so already, I encourage you to take advantage and download your own free copy of my Automate Your Plate checklist. Automate Your Plate is one of the nine directives that I talk about in my book and that I teach in my online course. The benefits of this eating approach is it gives you the freedom to choose many of the items that you'll be eating. It gives you control. It doesn't require that you starve yourself and it gives you a steady and continual source of fuel. And when it comes to time savings, this eating approach has the potential to save you 11 hours of your life each week. That's right, 11 hours. I spell it out with math. I go into detail and conservative detail of how you can save 11 hours each week of your life by doing Automate Your Plate. And like I said, I'm a 52-year-old online fitness coach with 39 years of experience with health and fitness. I work full-time and I have a very busy schedule. Yet, while following this eating approach and the other eight directives in my book, I've been able to maintain my weight loss with very little effort at all. So yes, I put together a free step-by-step -step checklist, the Automate Your Plate checklist, allowing you to use it as your very own quick start guide so you can download it and begin benefiting from it today. So be sure to grab yourself a free copy. For those of you listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, just go to ethanlarock.com forward slash automate. And if you're watching on YouTube, I put a link down below and you can get it there. Okay, so that voice in your head is messing with you again. You see, your mind knows that you're about to do something very drastic. It knows that you're fed up and you plan on taking back control of your life. It knows that you're about to create a plan to start working out regularly and eating properly. So like clockwork, it leaps in and says, hello, uh, nice ideas you have, but 
You don't have any time for any of this. How do you think you're going to have any time to get any of this done? Even if you did have the time, do you know how much work it would be? Hey, you know what? You're better off dealing with this later. Now let's go find a remote control. We can go sit on the couch and we can go watch a nice movie. So again, like every week, I'm here to help you deal with the number one thing that determines whether we are successful or whether we fail at whatever it is we desire, in this case, our health and fitness. And that one thing is your psychology. You see, I find that on the most part, the best way to deal with that little inner voice when it starts sending me little negative statements is to develop a logical plan that 100% defeats the argument. So you have a busy life. I don't know your specific situation, but I'm assuming you likely have a job, you may have children or a family, you may have hobbies and other interests, you may have other commitments to groups or to your community. You may be at a point that you feel like you're stretched so thin that you could snap. On top of that, you may feel trapped in an unhealthy body. And you may be making these promises to yourself that one day soon you're going to take charge and you're going to get your health and fitness back only when you can find some time. And you may be in the habit of making false promises to yourself, telling yourself that you're going to take charge and start exercising soon and getting your nutrition on track. And you may be throwing your hands up in the air asking, how am I ever going to find time for any of this? So I encourage you to get out a pen, a piece of paper or journal and begin writing down some of these things. I'm going to share with you some specific and strategic steps that you can use to start taking back that valuable time that you're looking for. So number one, yep, you've guessed it. It relates to planning. Every week I talk a little bit about the importance of planning in your personal life. Now episode six and episodes 12 come to mind where I went into more detail, but I usually pepper it in throughout most of my episodes because planning is a very important thing. So I don't want to get too deep into it here because I've talked about it many times, but the, the basics of it are you, you need to know where you're at today. You need to know what you're doing with your time each day. So that requires that you, for seven days, write down what you do each day, um, every 15 minutes, in increments of 15 minutes, and keep track of what you're doing in your personal time. So from the time you get up in the morning till when you get to work, you record what you do each 15 minutes. So for example, from, from 6.30 in the morning till 6.45, I get ready for work or I take a shower. From 6.45 till 6.30, I prepare my first meal or, or whatever that might be. And you do that all throughout your day up until you get to work. And while you're at work, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to record anything. But then when you get off work, you start, you start recording every 15 minutes. I took this time to drive home. I took this much time to go pick up groceries or whatever it might be. And you do that for seven, seven days of the week. And you do that all the way until you go to bed each night. And that gives you a starting point. That lets you know exactly what you're doing right now with your time, okay? That's how, that's how you start developing your plan. It starts with what are you doing right now? And then basically what you do with it, and I, I, go, in, I go in depth in some of these videos, but I don't, I don't want to um, bore you with it if you already heard it, but um, then what you do is you find out what's not value added, you know? Things like scrolling, scrolling on your iPhone for hours on Facebook or YouTube or whatever it might be watching television programs, um, playing games, online gaming, all these things. And what I encourage you to do is basically put a, a red X next to those non-value added things. And the gist of it is you, you get rid of the things that are non-value added, the things that you really don't need that aren't moving you forward in your health and fitness goals or whatever other goals you're trying to achieve. And you replace those with value added things, right? So the obvious one is you want to determine how many days a week you want to get some exercise of some sort, you know, and you got to pencil those in. You got to make sure that you're scheduling that you're going to do these workouts and you need to figure out also when you're going to prepare your meals for your nutritious, um, well-balanced meals. Because if you don't do that, if, you, if you're not planning it, it's not going to happen naturally. It's not just going to fall in your lap. You have to have a plan. And one other thing when it comes to your plan, you should have an idea of what your goals are that relate to that plan. You know, so you must have some sort of idea in your mind of how much weight you want to lose or how much muscle you want to gain. And 
What you need to do is figure out when you want to do it by, and then chunk, then just chunk it back. You know, that if it's if it's three months from now, I want to lose this much weight. Well, how much is that per month? And then how much per week? And then how much per day? You know, and it's as simple as that. So the very first thing, like always, I would suggest that you establish your plan. The second thing that I would suggest that you do, the second step, is to take some time with a piece of paper and a pen and sit down and start asking yourself some probing questions about your time, for example. You can write down, when am I ever going to find time to do what I should be doing for my health and fitness? Seriously, when am I going to find time to work out, to start planning my nutrition, start making time to prepare these nutritious meals? When am I going to do it? Is it going to be after the kids are in school, after the kids are out of school, after the kids have grown up, when I start working less hours, when I finish those exams, when my business slows down, when life becomes less busy. These are all important questions to address because these are the excuses that we make for ourselves that prevent us from getting anywhere with our weight loss and with our health and fitness. You may find yourself looking at other people that are in really good shape around the same age as you. And you may be saying, how is it that they find time to stay in such good shape? They have kids, they have jobs, they have responsibilities. How is it that they do it? And what most people do is they answer that question with, oh, they must have some sort of secret scenario that I don't have, some advantage over, over me. So somebody must watch their kids for them or or they must have some sort of a nanny or or maybe they, they have a better situation that's different from mine where they can they can get their spouse or their family to, to look after the kids for them so they can get their workouts in or, or whatever it might be. And the problem with that is they're making excuses for themselves. The truth of the matter is every single human being on the planet has the right of choice. That means the way you're living right now is what you chose to live. And the cool thing about knowing that is that you also have the ability to change what you're doing right now. So if your life is full of all kinds of extracurricular activities and things that are just preventing you from having time to take care of the one most precious thing you have, which is your health and fitness, then it's all a matter of priority. Instead of making excuses and saying, well, that person, the reason they can stay in shape is because their genetics or because they have this advantage that I don't have or they have this person that helps out with the kids or they only work part time and they don't work full time like I do and you start making all these excuses, it's not going to hurt anybody else. It's only going to hurt you. It's going to make it so you've dismissed the need to do any kind of action at all. It's a built in human instinct. It's part of our psychology. So you do have this power. You have the freedom to choose what you want to do with your time. So yes, the first thing you should do is do some planning. The second thing you should do is ask yourself some of these probing questions. Do a little bit of a reality check, okay? And the third thing is, the truth and reality may be that it's not time that you're lacking at all. It's motivation that you're lacking. See, when it comes to motivation, it may be that you're just too darn comfortable in life. You know, you have, you're married possibly, you have a spouse that loves you for who you are and it kind of it lessens your motivation to stay attractive and it decreases your motivation for why you want to lose the weight and look better because you feel like no matter what I'm in a pretty good place I'm married I'm accepted my husband or wife loves me so I really don't need to put a priority on losing weight and making time for it the other thing is we have all these material things in life and because of that, because we've made these decisions to have all these material things in life, new cars, expensive items, we need to pay for these things. So many of us, what we do is we end up working more in order to make more money so we can have more things. That's a real key thing to pay attention to because there is a potential there. If you are, if you are up, to, up to here in debt, or up to here in things that you're spending money on and it's making it so that you are being driven to work more to make more money then that's a problem 
that's always going to take up your time if you can't control the way you spend money. So like I've said before, all these little things are related. Our financial decisions, our health, our careers, our relationships, they're all related. And this is just one more example. And like I said, if our motivation is way low, a lot of us just give up. And we say to ourselves, you know, it's a much easier for me to just come home from work, clean up a little bit, talk to the kids a little bit, do the minimum things, sit down on the couch, watch some television, go to sleep, go to work, and do it on a hamster reel over and over and over again. It's human nature. It's about avoiding the things that we perceive as being painful and therefore we don't have any motivation. So what can we do to get back our motivation? So there's two simple things that are part of this step three to motivate yourself. First one is positive motivators. And for that, I'm just gonna suggest something simple that you can start doing tomorrow if you wanted to. It's to spend 10 to 15 minutes each morning just visualizing on what it would be like when you lose the weight and when you get that healthy fit body that you want. And there's a few ways you can do this. One is mentally just in your mind, closing your eyes and picturing it, picturing what that would be like. But I also encourage you to do things like printing a picture off the internet or from a magazine of somebody that has a similar build to what you'd like to have. Because it really helps you to more tangibly lock in on the image that you want to, of what you want to be. And when you're doing this, I want you not only to see what the potential might be and what you might be able to look like, but I also want you to spend that 10 or 15 minutes thinking about how you would feel inside. What would your life be like? How would it feel to finally be in that place that you want to be? What kind of physical activities specifically would you be able to do that you can't do right now? What are some of the things that you could be involved in that you've always wanted to do or that maybe are lacking in your life right now that you'd be able to do once you lose all the weight and once you get that body that you've been wanting to get? The other thing I'm asking you to do is to think about some negative motivators that you could begin using today to motivate yourself. There's positive and there's negative in life. And negative motivators could be just as motivating as positive motivators. So for example, do you have any health issues? Do you have issues with potentially with high blood pressure, um, anxiety, depression, cholesterol, diabetes? If you have any of these things in your life right now, or you have any other types of diseases or things I haven't, I haven't thought of that relate to your, to your being heavy or overweight, then use those to motivate you to make a change in your life. I want you to think about what's coming next. Now, right now, you might be suffering. You might be suffering a little bit or you may be suffering a lot. But think about what's coming next. What kind of suffering are you looking at? If you keep living your life the way you're living it and you don't take charge and get your health back, you need to ask yourself, do you want to have a life of pain and worry for the rest of the time you have on this planet? You might also want to ask yourself, who in my life is going to suffer because of my inability to get my act together and to get motivated and start doing something about my health and fitness? Who's going to be affected by these decisions that I'm making? Will it be people that are close to me? Will it be my wife? Is my wife suffering because of the way I am? Will it be my kids that I won't be able to be here for them and participate in certain things? Are they already feeling it? That I can't run with them, that I can't bicycle with them, that I can't play with them, that I can't go to any events where it's hot because I don't enjoy it? Are they already feeling some of this? And what will the, my future be with them? What will it be like? These are just a few ideas I've come up with for negative motivators, but there's others out there. But I encourage you to use both positive and negative motivators to get you moving, to get you back on track to doing what you need to be doing. Because many times we tell ourselves we don't have time when what we're really lacking is motivation. So in summary, we all have the same thing, 
24 hours in the day. I have 24 hours in my day. The President of the United States has 24 hours in his day. The people that lead all these corporations in the world and fly around on jets and have billions of dollars, they all have 24 hours in their day. Everybody has 24 hours in their day. It's all a matter of what you choose to do with those hours and what they do and what I'm suggesting that you do to make the time in your life for what you find important. For example, for your exercise and for your nutrition and getting that in check is, like I said, make sure you've developed a plan. Sit down and write out a plan for what it is you want to do. Then what I want you to do is I want you to ask yourself some probing questions about time. When will you be able to find the time? And is this excuse really valid at all? Or is it just you haven't put enough effort into taking back your time? And finally, I want you to be honest with yourself and ask yourself, am I really not getting in the gym? Am I really not eating properly or making time to cook nutritious meals for myself? Is it really because I don't have time? Or is it because I'm just lacking some motivation? And if it is about your motivation, then take control of that as well. Find ways to use positive and negative motivators to kick yourself in the butt so that you can start losing the weight and get your health and fitness back on track. So you can find that youthful, vibrant version of you that's just sitting there waiting for you, calling you, saying, please, just do what you should do. Just do what you should do. Find the time. Sit down. Write out a plan. Take back your time. Take back your control so you can be healthy and happy again. So you can feel all those things in life that you're supposed to feel, that you're entitled to feel, and that you deserve to feel in life. You really do have the power to create and manage the time that you require in your life to do everything, to get to your job, to be there for your family, and yes, to take back your health and fitness through exercise and proper nutrition, getting proper rest, and all the other things that you need to do in a day. And if you are looking for a secret weapon that can help you take back up to 11 hours a week of your life, then I encourage you to download my Automate Your Plate checklist. It has the potential to save you 11 hours of your life each week. I do the math of that in my book and in my online course, and I go into detail. It's conservative calculations but it has the potential to save you 11 hours of your life each week. It's exactly why I have time to do all the things that I do in life. That I have time to you know, go to my job, I have time to do YouTube, I have time to do my websites, create online courses, and all a myriad of other things I've done, write a book. It's how I found the time. So take it from me, a family man who's raised a family, has children, and has a wife, it's all possible. It's just a matter of making the time. And that 11 hours that I'm saving from Automate Your Plate has a lot to do with it. Automate Your Plate was created by me. It's the exact eating approach that I've been using for 15 years now. I'm 52 years old and I stay at around 10% body fat consistently. That's after being in a state of obesity, not only once, but twice. And since the second time, when I turned it all around, it's been more than 15 years. This Automate Your Plate has really helped me. And the Automate Your Plate checklist, it cuts out all the confusion and it shows you in a paint by numbers approach how to automate your plate. It's as simple as download it, print it, and start following the checklist one step at a time and you'll be automating your plate in no time at all. Just go to ethanlarock.com forward slash automate and you can download it there. And if you're watching on YouTube, there is a link down below, like I mentioned earlier, and you can get it there. So before we go, please leave me some comments. Do you think that taking back your time is something that you'll be able to do? If not, please share with me some ideas or comments of why you don't think this will work for you. And it's important that you don't hold back because I do read the comments. And I may be able to help you with a reply or maybe a future episode. I'm thankful again that we got to spend some time together. And I want you to remember something. You're not the only person in the world that's had this challenge with finding time to do the things you need to do. That also means you're not alone. 
I'm telling you now that you do have the power within you to figure this whole thing out. Believe in your abilities and refuse to give in to that negative voice in your head. Now have an awesome remainder of the week. And until we meet again, stay healthy, be happy, and live your life with intention every single day.